Friends, greetings from the New York International Auto Show. We are going to start our live broadcast, one of many, with the 2018. Raymond, is that a 2018 or a 17? That's the 2018. That is the 2018 Lincoln Navigator, and that, more importantly, you guys know this man as the Preacher Man. How are you guys? Raymond Blessings. Indeed. What were the blessings we got before? Well, today you got to receive your own. You got to snowball all your wishes together, toss them up in the air, and whatever falls on you are your blessings. Whatever doesn't, don't worry about it. See, now you know why I love this guy. <laughs> okay, now that we've gotten our blessings from the Preacher Man, the official Preacher Man of Moto Man, let's do a quick design walk around of the 2018 Lincoln Navigator. So let's, let me turn the camera around. I want to show you guys. Uh, walk through some of the design. Now overall let's stand back. You're looking at that and you probably think that looks a lot like the Ford Expedition. Now this is based on the same platform as the Expedition. As a matter of fact it is a Ford Expedition. But let's go through a couple of things that separate this apart. Number one, it does look significantly different in the front end, obviously, because they put on the Lincoln nose. And then they've done some other details. I spent some time walking around the car over the past couple of hours. Let me show you some things. Obviously, this signature is telling you this is a navigator, or as they refer to uh, in the hip hop community, the Gator. You gotta get yourself a Gator. And then, look back here. This is almost identical to the Expedition. I gotta tell you, you guys know I'm not a huge Ford guy, but I really, really do like what they did with the Expedition in terms of the design. It's such a clean, this area here, we've talked about this on design episodes of the show, this area here is called the Daylight Opening, and this Daylight Opening, they've done such a beautiful job cleaning it up over the old car. I would argue this Daylight Opening is a little bit cleaner than the Escalade, and let me show you why. Look at what they did here. This is, so this is an A pillar here. This is a B pillar, this is a C pillar, and this is the D pillar. So D pillar obviously is gonna be on a, on a wagon. But look how they black this out, but it's not just putting black over a piece of metal. They've, I don't wanna say it's not flush, but they've made this look like it's one piece of glass all the way through, especially when you stand back and look at it. And that's why you have such a clean daylight opening on such a large vehicle. The other thing you don't notice, it's that trick there combined with, notice a higher departure angle here. Those two things put together make this look physically, at least in my eyes, a little bit smaller than the Navigator that came before it, which makes it seem like there's just less mass and arguably more attractive. Again, you guys know I'm not a huge Ford and Lincoln fan, especially not a Lincoln fan at all. But this, I would argue, is an, an attractive vehicle. Even the grill looks somewhat good on the vehicle in the front. Now, I will say there is this, there's no way to put it, in design, the trend nowadays is to make these things look as big as possible. But there's a trick that they've been doing over the past couple of years. What they do to accentuate width in a small vehicle is make this smaller, and the idea is to make the overall vehicle have a larger presence on the road. Well, this is the exact opposite. What they did here is they've increased the size of this to make the overall vehicle accentuate the existing presence. Like, look at the front of that. If, if, if you're looking at that grill and you don't see Bentley Bentayga or some sort of like a Bentley ripoff grill, then you are not looking hard enough. Let's come around here some more. Take a look at the wheels. I like what they did with the wheels. This is, if you look at BMWs nowadays, um, some other luxury cars nowadays, everyone's going with this like 21 spoke finish here. It's nice, I think it works for this because the vehicle itself is just so slab sided. You see what I'm looking at there? Let's look down here. See how you got to kind of, kind of it's like a, the line comes down here and then you have a beautiful crease that runs all the way here and this is where it gets slab sided. Not to the point where it's completely flat like a Range Rover, there's a little bit of curvature in the metal there which is fantastic and you can see it better there. Overall, 
If I were a Range Rover, I'd be pretty pissed off because the <laughs> it does look a hell of a lot like a Range Rover. But then again, if you're gonna emulate emulate the one that's selling to footballers because they want to sell these to footballers. Okay, so let's go around a little bit the back on the other side so you guys can see some of the other details. Again, this is the portion here that looks very similar to the Expedition. I don't think they did enough to change it back here, but then again, I don't know how much you could do to make this box work. Then, uh, let's see, I think that's everything I want to show you on the outside. You've got the satellite radio antenna sits up top instead of in the back, so up top in the front. See that there? Then let's go on on the inside, and this is where I think we're going to spend most of our time. Um, yeah, you've seen these seats before. These are in uh, straight out of the Continental. They are just like 85 different ways, which, hey, you know, big thumbs up for the folks at Lincoln for doing that. However, I'm going to pull it right out here. Look at that. You and I have had many episodes. I've seen your comments how you don't like these types of navigation screens that either look tacked on or can't somehow hide themselves into the dashboard. Well, let's get in there and let's talk about it. I think is the worst offender of these big screens that don't hide. I'm not mad at a big screen. What I am mad at is a screen that doesn't hide. That is, this is no exaggeration, the size of like an iPad Pro. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's to the point where I think it does, like if you were in traffic and you had a low car there, you might have a problem with that. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit there, but it, it, it's that big. Overall, I think that, it's, that is the one piece of the design on the interior that really, really does not work. But let's take a look at some other details. So first and foremost, I like the width. They, they've, they've done two things here, two contrasting things. We talked about this in the Kia episode a couple of years, what was, what was it, a year ago when we drove the Kia um, in Aspen. And they changed from that beautiful driver's focused grill, I mean grill, what am I saying? That driver's focused dashboard that was cantilevered like a German car here to this wide type of dashboard. And the reason why they did that is to, again, accentuate the width of a smaller car. Here, they're accentuating the width of a big truck. But simultaneously, they add this horizontal plane here, which I just, it, it, it's too much going on. I think what they should have done was keep this all the way over and then have, the, have this navigation screen be like a two position where you see just a limited amount of information within this, this like, sandwiched area here that obviously would be in the center and then have it pop up for other pop up for more detailed information look at the new mclaren 720s and you'll see a very good example of what i'm talking about this car is obviously not on here oh look at that it does go on well no it doesn't so no key detected but you can see that they've got a large tft screen here so all this is going to be digitally rendered now keep in mind i didn't see this car in action they just showed it uh last night and then obviously here at the show but let's take a look at some of the other details back here this is where i think some of the the better work has been done here believe it or not the build quality the tactile feel of this as a new vehicle it actually is pretty good this is, I would say, this is definitely faux, this detail here of the, the stitching, but it, it feels like it's separate. I, and I, I'm not entirely certain why they didn't actually make this leather, because you and I both know this vehicle is not going to be cheap. But look at some of the detail here. This is a better piece of, better quality of materials here, better quality of material here, which is simultaneous on the two, so it matches. Obviously, it doesn't quite match the level. I mean, that's the kind of detail that a BMW or Mercedes that would be matching. But look what they did here. All of the controls are very succinct that they're in one place, a la Mercedes-Benz. They invented this way back in the day. So this is the, uh, this switch here is the recline, so forward and backward. But this switch here is the piece that adjusts this, the backrest, which I have to say this is the successful part of this seat design for Lincoln and that they're able to get this thing adjustable. And that's the kind of stuff you see in an S-Class or a 7 Series. So I'm, I gotta tell you, I'm very happy that they did this. But then they've got all these other switches in here so you can extend the length of the seat here side by side, like you can do just the left or just the right. That's a nice little touch that's, that comes from Pontiacs. I always like, uh, let me turn the camera around. 
you know, you guys give me crap for being a Pontiac guy, but I got to tell you, Pontiac was uh, probably the forerunner to so many technologies in the car world you see today that uh, you just don't realize it. And here's a very small one that actually is in a Pontiac or from a Pontiac. Uh, anyway, let's, let's continue here. So all of the adjustments here, this is for the massage and the lumbar. And then they've got this integration of, it's called, a, it's a Revel audio system in here. So they've gone away from, I think it was THX that was going to be in nothing but Lincolns, but now they've got this Revel audio system. And this is the upgraded audio system. And it's a nice, beautifully finished speaker grill. It's not to the level of the S-Class, but I can see they completely ripped it off from the S-Class. And then here they've ripped this off from a Volvo. Uh, you know, on the, the Bowers and Wilkins system there, they have just this, this tweeter, which you can kind of see the tweeter, and then you have the actual cone around it. But what they did here, sadly my, my phone doesn't have the, the depth of field in this uh, in this low light, but you can see they've got the cone, but unlike Bowers and Wilkin where they really go for the detail, they have a yellow cone in the Bowers and Wilkin. Here I think they're missing out by having this big hunk of black plastic with a black cone and a black tweeter. So I think if they made finish this in like a like a, a silver with a with a, a colored cone, maybe like pick their own color, maybe red, something to separate out from this black plastic, that would make a huge difference there. Then let's take a look at the steering wheel here. Nice touch here, and let me show you something that I do like about Lincolns. I shouldn't say about Lincolns, but about this specific one. These toggle switches. So these are switches that are on any other, like most cars nowadays have steering wheel controls. But notice this one here, it's, a, it's like an old school, like Jaguar-esque toggle switch. And it's even repeated down here, you see this? On the HVAC system. And so when you're driving, you don't want to have to deal with this. There's no tactile feel here. You want this, or you want a knob. Speaking of tactile feel, the push button transmission, this I think is a complete disaster. Uh, I really think most manufacturers need to rethink this because this is, this is just not safe. Think about you're trying to do a three-point turn. You're really going to go and do this with your, with the buttons like this on the dashboard. This is, uh, it just, this makes no sense. And speaking of tactile feel, when you're driving, what is this going to be a six thousand pound vehicle? Uh, say goodbye to Raymond there. Say goodbye to Raymond there. Um, this is a six thousand pound vehicle. Do you really want to have to be touching a screen and not have any tactile feel when you're trying to pilot a six thousand pound vehicle? I really feel that's very, very, very unsafe. Uh, let me turn this around here. Uh, notice the panoramic sunroof. Escalade does not have it. This is an open letter to Dave Leone. Look, you're a competition, not just the Range Rover, but Lincoln Navigator now has the panoramic roof. Highly suggest it. The people that buy these things, they're buying them. Fuel economy is like on a list of 1 to 10. It's probably number 79. Um, so the concept of having extra weight in the vehicle, even high in the vehicle, I don't think that really that works in this market. I think people would prefer to have the panoramic roof. Uh, why don't we, let me show you one more thing up here and then I want to take you to the back seat. It came out wrong, didn't it? Anyway, let's take a look at this. Um, see this here? So notice what they did. They've got this, I think this is a faux wood, obviously cup holders here. They've got a wireless, the, the Qi standard wireless charging here. But take a look at this. I think this is interesting. It looks like individual armrests, right? So you would go to stand to reason, you'd pull it up here. But notice when you open it up, it's the whole thing opens. See that? I guess something, this doesn't make sense in, in practice because think about it. You're sitting here and you're driving, you want to open up the console to pull like, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, your Tic Tacs out. Uh, and your lady friend's got her armrest here. You've got to disturb them to open this up. This was just would have been a very simple fix here. Okay, so with that, I want to go to the back seat and show you guys the back seat. And what I should say is, actually, you know what, I should come on. Okay, this is experimental, me playing around with this live stuff on YouTube. Okay, so what we've got here, this is a setup that is the captain's chairs. I'm pretty certain this will be offered with a bench in the back as well, but you've got the captain's chairs, the console, as well as the baby seat back there. Uh, and then notice a couple of detail things. Once again, you've got the integration of this Revel audio system. You know, Lincoln... There's, there's, there's no nice way to put this. Um, 
I, I love Murray Callum. I mean, the guy is one of the most talented designers out there and is doing some great stuff. And like, even look at the exterior of this vehicle. He did a great job on it, uh, as well as the Expedition. But some of the details, I think that's where a company like Lincoln gets lost, as opposed to even Cadillac or especially something like a BMW, where this detail, this speaker detail here, it's just, it's too much. Because what they're doing, it's almost like, remember when Cadillac came out with the, seat, the current gen CTS? They put all these different textures. So you see how this is one texture here, they obviously learned from that. But Cadillac had leather here, suede here, and then wood here. Three textures in one area, that's one texture too much. And look what they did here. It's a speaker grill here that's, a, that, that's a, like a satin finish that's flush with a door panel. And then they put a tweeter in the center here that's now finished in somewhat of a different tone silver to this so it clashes like this would have worked perfect up front but here this is too much going on and it's it's not design for the sake of design this is design for the sake of hey look at me get what i'm saying now let's check out on the inside oh one more piece of design thing i want to show you i've got this little lip here on the uh on the uh uh, the floor mats. Okay, so let's hop in here. Let's take a look at some of this stuff. I do want to point out, speaking of design, look at the seat backs here. It's kind of like a race car almost. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually I like what Lincoln has done here because it's not just that it's a multi-adjustable seat. The point that this seat back, the reason why it's fixed here is to be able to have this to pivot and the headrest to go up and down and pivot, but not disturb the actual structure of the seat because there is some safety structure in here as well. Um, then let's take a look here and apologies for the very bad uh, lighting. I don't have much lighting on the inside here, but I wanted to make sure we guys got to see this. So you've got this, the repeatable uh, HVAC system back here. No toggle switches, just knobs. And, and granted here, tactile feels not a big thing because you're not paying attention to driving the car or piloting a 6,000 pound vehicle. Uh, two buttons here for the sunshade up here. So you can have the actual people in the back can control the sunshade for the panoramic roof. I think that's a nice touch. And then here, obviously, two USB ports. This is a SIG plug and then a regular 110, US 110 with three prongs. That is this. That's great connectivity. And then uh, that's a very odd place for a cup holder. Think about it. If you've got a cup holder here, do you really need it up here? And are you really going to go and get your secondary thing here? Maybe there's a refrigerator here. Let's see if we can find it. Um, same deal here. It doesn't split, but there is no refrigerator. I, you can't see again because there's not much light. My apologies. Um, my guess is there would be a refrigerator on offer. I'd be shocked if they didn't offer a refrigerator here. And then here you have a screen, a TFT screen to see what's going on. And this is to adjust the infotainment system here. Uh, the seats themselves, do they adjust? Yes, they go forward and backward. Let me uh, show you that. The seats do adjust forward and backward. So I'm about six foot tall and I'm sitting behind myself here. So you guys can see there how far back the seat is. And I've got plenty of room here. Let's take a look at this. I mean, plenty of room. Yes, I'm wearing real pants today. I did that just for you guys because I wanted to be fancy in New York. Uh, and then back there, I love you, but there's no way on God's green earth I'm going to put myself in that back seat. Let's see if we can open up the rear. I don't know if uh, it's unlocked, but let's try it anyway. Let's see what's going on here. We're going to try this. Switch this around. Oh no, it's locked up. Or no, let me see over here. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Got that going. So here I got the switch up here. Then I'm moving this thing forward, and then so it opens up both as a tailgate here, as well as this glass opens. And then let's see. You got all the buttons for the seats here. Obviously, the power is not on, but you can put both these from what I'm looking at this you can put both the second and third row down via the buttons here I've often thought this was strange let me give you my logic on this so think about this you someone who owns a vehicle like this is going to have 
probably a couple of rugrats. And of course, the rugrats are going to take a while to get their asses going. And you're you're rushed. You want to get to the lake house, or you know, go to the, like the polo match, wherever you go with something like this. Are you really going to wait? to hit that button and then push the weight for the seat to go down electronically? Or would you rather, like in the Chrysler, I can't believe I'm saying this about a Chrysler minivan, it's this quick, you know, you pull it and it goes down and it's that, it's three seconds. And then there's a long handle, pulls up again, three seconds. To me, in practice, a simple mechanical system, I think works significantly better than these electronic systems. And so here it's both uh, the third and second row that's adjusted. And then let's take a look here once again. I will give them, I, I'll give them some credit in that there's some detail that they're putting into this. Granted, it's a lot of bling. I think the kind of people that buy these things, especially people who buy them secondhand, are really into this stuff here with having this kind of branding. Me, I don't like... Here's another way to put it. I, I am a distance runner. You guys know this about me. And um, I don't need my shirts to say Nike or Under Armour or a New Balance. I would rather just have the shirt. I don't need to tell people what shirt it is. And I think it's the same thing here. Just let the beautiful design stand by itself rather than giving me some label that uh, tells me it's a Lincoln. Because frankly, I'm not gonna be bragging about a Lincoln. Um, let's see here. And then let's see if there's anything under here. We got a nice little storage here with a net. That's a neat touch. Okay. Um, and then, oh, look at this. You got a USB port there. Uh, there's another USB port over there, and then there's a buttons for the second row in the third row. Can you see that? Okay. I believe we have covered everything. That button is there. Okay. So that is everything for the Lincoln Navigator. Why don't I actually, you know what, before I leave you guys, let me show you two other colors. Okay. So this is like a medium blue metallic. I actually really like the medium blue metallic a lot. This is a burgundy. The contrast is better on this one. See the, uh, can we just get a quick look in here? I like the contrast of the saddle with the burgundy. She's not really that patient, is she? Yeah, she, wasn't, she doesn't like us very much. Um, and here's the burgundy. What do you guys like? Do you like the burgundy or do you like the blue? And before you answer that question, hello again, how are you? Uh, before you answer that question, take a look at the light blue. This is like the brochure color. This is the one that's in all the marketing materials. This one here. I'm sorry. Um, I gotta tell you, I know this is the one that they are really excited about, but I am not, I think the medium blue metallic is still my favorite. Although from the contrast, I do like the burgundy. You'll love the closing buttons. Okay, cool. Okay. So that is everything for the Lincoln Navigator. I have gone more than double. I wanted to be talking about this car for 10 minutes and I can't believe I've discussed a Lincoln with you uh, for 20 minutes. So here's what's going to happen. I told you that we're going to talk for about an hour for our uh, New York Auto Show for our first live broadcast. So I am going to end this broadcast, but join me in about 10 minutes. In about 10 minutes. Oh, look, it's TJ. Let's say hello to TJ real quick. Look who it is. It's TJ. I'm George. Who's George? Aren't you George? Oh, Mr. Moto Man? Yeah. Oh. This is TJ. <laughs> TJ is the man. So all of the recent live, uh, Inside the Moto Man Studios, which you'll see shortly, and the Ask Moto Mans, TJ is the one that shot it. <laughs> we just did a, um, a quick walk around, a design walk around of the Navigator. Oh, it's nice inside. You like it? It's nicer than most Fords. This is, <laughs> this is my love about TJ. He's honest. He's also a proper car guy. He's got a Miata that he loves to track, so he's a good man. Good. But no, it's normally like when I think of a Ford interior, I think of injection molded plastic. Yeah. Like vinyl made to look like it yeah. has faux stitching. And at least it smelled and looked like real leather inside I, of that I car. think I saw some real stitching in it, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah, let's look this way because the light's killing us from the Q60. Okay, so guys, this is what I'm doing. I told you guys we're going to talk for about an hour today. We're going to do that. I'm going to tie off for about a 10 minutes and reset. We're going to go look at another car that we saw here. Uh, so join me in about 10 minutes from now. What time is it? You should know these things. Let me get my drug dealer you phone a, out. You have a phone. Uh, 3.30. Three, okay, so it's 3.30. At 3.40 East Coast time, uh, we'll pick up again with another car. So come back to the channel, and we'll do another design walk around. Uh, that's from me and TJ. In the interim, in the comments below, let us know what you think of the design. What do you like? 
and what you don't like and why and let us know what region of the world you hail from. Until then, until I see you in 10 minutes, bis später.